What if you could use artificial intelligence for the manual parts of the SEO work? Here's my general stance on using large language models for SEO. Please don't. The world is already full of those billions of articles written and slapped together by writers from emerging economies that are really, really hard to read. There's no value in them at all. And now artificial intelligence comes into the picture and gives you the promise of getting articles written pretty much for free, higher quality, and in like five seconds. Sounds good, right? Well, no, because those AI articles were never going to rank in the first place. Here's what Brian Dean, the SEO guru, has to say. I don't see you know AI generated content being this huge game changer because all it can produce is like generic, low quality content. But AI is still really, really good at some things like summarizing information and following precise instructions. This is why in this video, we're going to automate my least favorite part of SEO work, and that's writing meta descriptions. Specifically, I'm going to show you two use cases. Number one, we're going to create meta descriptions entirely from scratch using real-world SERP data. And number two, we're going to optimize our existing meta descriptions. They might be too long, too poorly written, too short, you name it, we can do it at scale. And I'm going to show you how to do it for over 500 articles at the same time. <sighs> Mind-blowing. And as always, zero copy-pasting. Ready? Let's dive in. For this first use case, we're going to create meta descriptions from scratch for our existing articles. The first order of business is for me to get a list of all of our existing content. I use Webflow as my CMS, so I'm going to click on export, and there I have my CSV file. Let's go to Google Sheets and import it. But here's the problem. There is no body of the article in this spreadsheet. This is very often going to be the case if you're an SEO consultant or if you do not have the permission to extract all of the data from a web page. So let me show you how to solve this really quick. To make this possible, let's use a workflow automation tool called Bardeen. Link to it in the description below. And we're going to be using a very simple data scraper. I have a dedicated video about how to do that over here. You can check it out. Let's open up the browser extension. And over here, we can create a new automation that is going to use a scraper action. Here, I'm going to pick scrape, and I want to scrape data on this currently open page. And then there are a few arguments that I need to fill out. There is a scraper template, which informs what information you want to extract from a given page. I'm going to create a new scraper template from over here. Let's pick this tab. And I'm going to pick a list scraper over here. Let's call it Redeem Articles. And from here, I just need to click on two of the same fields in the same list item. And this is how Bardeen knows, hey, this is the list that I want to scrape. And then pagination, there are multiple articles that will be loaded dynamically uh, on this specific page. You can scroll down all the way down and then there are more articles that will be uh, loaded. So I'm going to pick infinite scroll over here. And now let's just pick the data that we want to extract from this individual list items. I want to grab the title and the link to the article. Let's call it title, link, and also get the category. I'll grab the image because why not? The second argument allows you to select how many articles you want to scrape. So I want to choose how many articles I want to scrape every time. Okay, and just like this, we can extract the information from that page. And up next, I want to get the article body. There are two ways to do it. You can scrape information in the background, or you can grab just entire HTML of a page. There are two different actions for it. For this specific tutorial, I just want to grab entire HTML because who knows what I want to do with it later using artificial intelligence. Let's add new action, and let's use a command get HTML of a page get pages HTML, that's the name of the action. And here I can go to action number one and grab all of the links of these articles and feed it to the second action, get page as HTML. So we're getting all of the information from the scraper and the HTML of the page. This is the body of the page, this is great. You can also set a custom delay if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Uh, finally, I want to dump this information somewhere. I'm going to use Google Sheets. Here on the left side, I have Google Sheets. Let's add rows to a Google Sheet, that's our action. Let's use ask me every time variable, we'll call it G sheets. And the final brush stroke is let's add all of the data from previous actions to this Google sheet. For the title, I'm going to grab it from the scraper action. The content I'm going to grab from get pages HTML and get entire value. 
And finally, the category page. Let's click on done. And here's the automation. We're scraping data, we're getting the body of the page, and then we're adding all of this information to a Google Sheet. Let's call this automation scrape coordinating blog posts. Ready to try it? Let's click on this automation and let's grab just the first 10 articles over here and let's create a new spreadsheet. Create a new spreadsheet and call it blog posts. And let's run the automation. All right, and here's a list of our blog posts. Let's check them out. Let's format things a little bit. Here we have our 10 articles with the content. Now comes the exciting part. Let's write some great meta descriptions. I'm going to create a new column called AI meta descriptions, just like this. And in order for us to do this, we'll need to use artificial intelligence inside Google Sheets. And to do this, we're going to use an add-on for Google Sheets called GPT for Sheets. I'm going to enable it. And I have a dedicated video about exactly this over here. Just check it out, it's amazing. You're probably new to it, you can click on the list of functions and check out what you can do with GPT-4 Sheets. For our use case, I'm going to be using the GPT function, which is just an open prompt. You can ask anything to OpenAI. And what we want to do is we want to type in equals GPT, and then we need to construct our prompt. Our prompt will need to include the title of the article and the content for the article. So for that, we're going to use this other function called concatenate, and all it does, it just combines a few pieces of text. Here's my prompt, write a meta description for an article with the title, then I point to the title column. The meta description should be between 110 and 160 characters. Make it engaging, but do not repeat the same stuff as in the title. Here's the blog post content. Ready for it? And there's an error. And frankly, I already knew that this is going to happen. So I wanted to show you how to troubleshoot this. Uh, the error is the following. We are feeding too much data into ChatGPT because we're feeding the whole content of the article. So just click on default settings and here you get to pick which model that you want to use. I'm going to be using the GPT-4 model because it can take in a lot of data. And here you can feed up to 6,000 words, which is pretty much five articles worth. And that's pretty much it. So once we have that configured, paste this function one more time. Discover the top 10 pipe drive integrations that will revolutionize your workflow, automate tasks, streamline processes, and boost your sales productivity. This is actually a great summary of the article, and I think it's a great uh, meta description. Here comes the really cool part. You have hundreds of articles. How do you get great meta descriptions like this one? Well, all you need to do is you drag it down all the way, and just like this, here we have all of the meta descriptions, but I want to show you how to elevate it a little bit. So right now, as you can see, we have discover, learn, and it's going to be very factual, very precise, and you can make it a little bit more creative. Let me expand these a little bit so we can read them, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to go to our default settings, and here you get to pick a model that you're going to be using. You can use GPT-4, for example, or you can use GPT-3.5 Turbo that has 16,000 words that it can process. This is really helpful when you're feeding content of the page, but here the creativity part is what I want to experiment around with. Uh, here I can update these fields to, for example, a little bit more creative. So precise is zero, and then hyper creative like Dali, Da Vinci, you name it, it's going to be a little bit closer to the right. So let's make it a little bit more creative. So let's refresh those results. I'm going to delete uh, these existing ones and just drag them all the way down over here. All right, that's already a lot more interesting. So you really have two options. You can play around with your prompt or you can play around with the temperature. Let me show you another really killer use case that you can use in order to make your articles more interesting and more engaging for the reader as we are on it already. I'll call it the AI summary. And like I did before, I'm just going to use the regular GPT function, uh, create my prompt using concatenate and ask for a summary of this article in bullet points so we can insert it automatically in the article. Summarize this article in bullet points. I'll put just the bullet points eight max, make them sound engaging. And here are the AI summaries that we can use to enhance our reader's experience. This goes a pretty long way. And now all that is left is for us to send this data back to our CMS. You can use a tool like Parabola to pull all of the data from this spreadsheet, match it to the article that you have it in CMS, in my case in Webflow, and then get it updated automatically. Moving on to use case number two, which is fixing bad meta tags. 
our publishing schedule is insane. It's crazy. And this is why it's really impossible to get everything perfect, especially those meta tags. Let me show you exactly the problem. I've just done a site audit with Ahrefs and here are all of the potential problems that can cause me damage. I have 984 meta descriptions that are too long and 274 that are too short. Well, and frankly, 52 that are missing, but you already know how to solve that problem. Let's go ahead and fix this problem for good. I have tons of different pages, but specifically I want to narrow down my search to include playbooks. Those are automations and all of them have descriptions about what the automation can do. And many of them are a bit too long. Let's export those and create a new Google Sheets with them. Let me delete all of the fields I do not need. Okay, now we have the URL, the title, and the meta description. And for this use case, my prompt is to rewrite meta descriptions for this article titled and then I'm pointing at the column. Meta description should be between 110 and 160 characters, make it engaging, and here's the current meta description. Again, those are all of the meta descriptions that are too long. Okay, there we have it, and this looks like a proper meta description compared to what we had before. Drag it all the way down, and just like this, problem solved. This would take a dedicated writer at least three months to do, and he would definitely make tons of mistakes because Let's face it, this is not the most exciting part to do. And this would cost probably thousands of dollars. If this is not SEO magic, I do not know what is. Then this makes me an SEO magician. Thanks for watching. The links to the automations are down below. And before you go, I just created another great video about how to use AI to do SERP analysis, meaning that you can understand the browsing intent and create better content and so, so much more. If you want to check out that video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. It's coming out next week. And make sure to watch this video next about using ChatGPT inside Google Sheets right here.